Welcome to Inside Digital Photo TV coverage here from the PDN Photo Plus Conference and Expo 2007 and the Inside Digital Photo TV coverage is brought to you by Epson. You can find out more information over at proimaging.epson.com. Right now we have a very special little get together. I'm here with Steve Heiner from Nikon, Cliff Mountaineer that is a Nikon professional shooter and of course my buddy Dan Havlick from PDN. So Steve, tell me, right now we're sitting here with a brand new D3. This is a beautiful piece of equipment. Let's just start talking about the camera. Tell me some cool stuff here. Well, Scott, this is uh, something we've been waiting for for a long time. I know a lot of professional photographers have been waiting for this for a long time. Anytime we introduce a new product, it's exciting news. And, of course, we're very busy here at the show today. Uh, this camera is quite revolutionary for us, uh, primarily because it contains our brand new FX format sensor, which is essentially 23.9 by 36 millimeters in size. Uh, it fires at a very rapid nine frames per second at full resolution. Uh, you can actually even take it up to as high as 11 frames per second in the DX crop mode since all you have to do is attach a DX lens to this camera and it automatically detects that and crops the image area for you. Uh, this has our brand new X-Speed image processing system, uh, which is a very comprehensive uh, uh, method of uh, actually processing the image, sort of a culmination of all of our experience in digital photography built into the brains of this camera. It also has a scene recognition system that's never been in a camera before where it can actually detect and, and predict essentially what it is you're shooting a photograph of. We've tasked other parts of the technology in the camera to assist in basic autofocus operations and uh, auto white balance and auto exposure operations like never before. Uh, it also has a huge uh, three-inch LCD on the back of the camera, which actually has a 920,000 dot resolution. So really easy to make your way through the menus and to uh, edit your photographs. It's got a lot of other really niceties, uh, including a, a wireless capability. So you can plug in a wireless pack. You can actually transmit images directly to a computer or to an FTP. Uh, you can also control this camera remotely for anyone who's interested in putting a remote camera somewhere. We actually have a piece of software that will allow you to actually control every aspect of the camera, including a new live view mode where you can actually see the LCD on the back of the camera uh, and see the photograph before it actually takes the picture. You can do that remotely using a computer like never before, too. So it's got some very exciting technologies and features, I think, that are going to make a whole new group of pictures out there. Yeah, the competition's really in for it now, yeah. Afraid so. Steve, can you talk a little bit about uh, shooting at high ISOs and getting low noise, which is a, a lot of advances made in this D3 camera? Definitely. By virtue of the size of the sensor and subsequently the size of the pixels themselves, we've been able to obtain a, an ISO range from 200 to 6400. That's our normal ISO range. And then, of course, as with other Nikon cameras, we always have an option for at least a high 1 and, in this case, a high 2 also. Uh, those two high one and high two are the equivalent of 12,800 and 25,600 ISO uh, equivalency, respectively. Yeah, the, the high two. Talk about what sort of circumstances photographers might use that setting because it's very unique. Uh, I would call it shooting in available darkness. <laughs> this, this allows you, I think Cliff can really speak to this more than anyone, but in those situations where the light is uh, absolutely the worst you can imagine, uh, it's enough to, to, to shoot comfortably and confidently up to 6,400 ISO. But of course, in the news business, you're trying to capture history. You know, those moments are fleeting. And in certain instances, it's better to have the picture than not have that picture. And these are very usable pictures all the way up to its top ISO of 25,600. Sounds great. Uh, Steve, tell us about you have some sensors in the camera that will actually give you a level view or a horizon view. I don't know what your exact terminology is for, but tell us about this feature in the camera. We actually call it a virtual horizon. If you can imagine, it's very similar to uh, what you would find in an aircraft. Uh, you can go into the uh, uh, setup menu in the camera, and it actually has a virtual horizon that will indicate when your camera is level. So if you're uh, attempting to set it up on a tripod or to make sure that it's absolutely level with the horizon, uh, this has the tool built right in for you. Just look at that. Yeah, that's really slick. So now we're going to speak with Cliff Mountner. Now, Cliff, you're a professional photographer. You're a sponsored Nikon professional, and you've been out actually in the field, real-life situation, playing with a D3. Tell me your thoughts on the camera. Well, 
First of all, uh, in its simplest terms, I can now make photographs that I haven't been able to make before. This camera does allow me to make photos that were impossible to achieve before. It, it's that simple. Uh, the ISO performance, I think, is beyond exceptional. But I also don't want that to be so touted that we're underrating some of the other features that this camera has done to improve itself. Uh, the autofocus system, for example, it's one thing to shoot at ISO 6400. Those conditions have to be pretty poor to begin with to need 6400. Well, if you can't focus in that light, what good is 6400? And with this new 51 area point autofocus system with 15 cross type sensors that allows you to lock on, I'm talking instantaneously. And I can't tell you why Steve could, but all I know is it just works. And when shooting at 1.4, like I like to shoot, I like to shoot wide open. And if I just select my autofocus point, and I don't have to change the plane of, of, of my camera. For example, I used to be a center weight and recompose photographer. Now I can just choose one of those points, lock on, click, and I nail it at 1.4 or really any other aperture. Uh, revolutionary. Auto white balance. Uh, I'm in situations in churches where there's mercury vapor, sodium vapor, fluorescent, tungsten, daylight pouring in. And I'm a raw shooter, but I've been shooting JPEG with this because I have not been able to shoot raw quite yet. Uh, and it's nailing skin tones like I'm in perfect daylight. And even in the JPEG mode. In JPEG mode. That's, that's the exceptional part of this. The scene recognition system uh, allows, in conjunction with the meter, I suppose, uh, allows me to nail white balance in just about any conditions. JPEG shooters are going to love this camera, but for raw shooters, it, it, it tweaks things even more. It, it just allows you to take pictures you couldn't before. And, and again, the ISO performance, unbelievable. What's been your most uh, number one feature of this new camera that's actually really wowed you the most? Has it been the sensor? Uh, what actually really surprised you the most when you started playing with the D3? Honestly, I, I, was, I was surprised with how well the auto white balance performed. I, I had heard about uh, the ISO performance. I had heard about that. Uh, didn't quite believe it until I used it. The autofocus capabilities, when they first told me that the autofocus capabilities of the D3 were going to surpass the D2XS, I was like, yeah, right. Uh, and, it, and it does. Uh, that was surprising to me. The auto white balance was surprising to me. Uh, the thing that doesn't surprise me is the ergonomics going from one flagship Nikon camera to the other flagship Nikon camera. Now to this, it's seamless. It's a seamless transition as a pro being able to pick up a new camera and not really need a manual to know what the hell's going on. That, to me, is, is an absolute precious uh, attribute of this camera to go from one to the other. Right. You pick it up and go. It's seamless. Yeah. No doubt. Now, Steve, the D3... More information, where would people find out about it? You have sample images online, uh, pricing, delivery, all this kind of fun stuff because people want to get their hands on this now. Yes, they do, Scott. Uh, NikonUSA.com, uh, the best place to look for uh, more information. The camera will be available towards the end of November and uh, has a, uh, a price of $4,999 for the body. Very economically priced for what it can do. Absolutely. Especially if you're a professional who needs a tool like this, then it's uh, that uh, is indispensable. Yeah. Uh, Steve, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much, Scott. Cliff, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nice talking with you. And Dan, cool stuff. We're going to be able to find more information about this, of course, over on PDN Online yep. with the new D3. And yep, and you can find more information, of course, over at InsideDigitalPhoto.com. So, of course, we've been here with Scott Shepard, Dan Havlick, Steve Heiner, Cliff Mountaineer. You can find more information over at InsideDigitalPhoto.com. <laughs>